I will label this, I believe, I will label it like a blue or something. If I have a nice blue. Blue might be nice. So, what's the name of this big bone right here? Frontal. frontal. Here we go, that's the frontal region. Okay. Now, if this is the frontal bone, we know that this bone right here is the bone that makes up the side of the head. Parietal. That, that's your parietal bone, all right? So parietal bone is on the side of the head, right here. So now that we know that frontal has to be beside parietal, if we go over to this lateral view, we can use that same type of rationale. That's got to be the frontal, which means that the one right beside it has to be the parietal. And you can really see how large that parietal bone is for that view, okay? Now, okay, that's cool. Let's go down here. What's the name of the lower jaw? Mandibles. Mandibles. Anybody know the name of this bone? This is the bone that makes up our upper jaw. Maxilla. Maxilla. Okay. This is the maxilla. What's the name of this guy that makes up the side of our cheek? Zygomatic. Zygomatic. That's your zygomatic bone right there. Great. Okay. Which means that, what's the name of that little bone, like these green lines in the division? What's the name of that one? Zygomatic, because you're right beside maxilla, right? See how we can kind of work through the border where it really helps out if you're presented with a two dimensional image? So here is the zygomatic. And I think that as we, as we tackle anatomy, that's probably the best tool, study tool that I can give you guys. Because even if you go on to medicine, um, you're going to be looking, whether you're looking at x-rays or scans, or maybe you go into medical school and you're looking at things. You're going to see patients that look abnormal to what you studied in, in medical school, or you know, you're going to see things that just don't match exactly what you, you saw in school. But if you can find landmarks that you know are true, that you know the identity of certain landmarks and work out from that landmark, it'll help you identify everything, even if it looks completely strange. Okay, good. All right, now, what we're gonna do is we are going to start here, and we're gonna work through our way through these bones of the orbit. These bones are tough, okay? There's actually three holes in the orbit that I'm gonna draw now. Um, you're gonna have one hole that's right here. You're gonna have another hole that stretches like this. And have another hole that stretches down like that. Okay. Three holes. And you can really see them nicely. That's why I drew this three-quarter view. So you can see right into that orbit and see those three holes. You can't see any of those holes in that left orbit because he's angled away. Okay? We'll talk about the names of those here in a second. But first, let's walk through these bones. There's two little bones on top of the nose. Nasal bones. Okay? See these two little guys? So this guy and that guy are both the nasal bones. What's the name of this bone right here, right beside the nasal bone? Trick question. There's a, what's the name of it? So right beside the nasal bone is we work laterally. What's the name of that one? Maxilla. Maxilla. We already named it. The maxilla actually stretches all the way up beside the nasal bone. Okay? So you can, if you learn that order, then you'll be fine. Okay, so that's the maxilla, we've already labeled him. See this tiny little bone that's on the other side of the maxilla? That's called the lacrimal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Then, the one right beside him, he kind of occupies the medial side of that orbit. He's not very large from this view, that's the ethmoid. Okay, see this bone that occupies a lot of the um, holes? Okay, like the holes kind of go through there? That's the sphenoid bone. So the 
sphenoid bone is located next to the other one, <coughs> and a lot of those holes lie inside that sphenoid. Okay. Then, what's right beside the sphenoid is the zygomatic. All right. This is how I remember it. Male lions eat skinny zebras. Okay. So if you remember that order, you'll be fine. Male lions eat skinny zebras. Or mean lions, I don't know. That's what I'm wearing. Right. Mean lions, more correct, I guess. Mean lions eat skinny zebra. So let's use that same logic. What's that bone right there? It's a trick question. Yeah, just right here, right here, right here. So the yellow is just my like sketch marks, but like this green little area right here, what's the name of that bone? Zygomatic. zygomatic. Okay, and this is totally a trick question. But the point there is that zygomatic actually occupies the lateral border of the orbit. It curves around. It's the same bone. I just drew this black line because it's a shadow. It's like an edge. So that's zygomatic, which means that who see? Sphenoid. Yeah, it's sphenoid. Okay, that's just the other side of the sphenoid we can't see. So this guy is sphenoid. And that's all we can see from that angle. Those are the only two bones you can see from that orbit at this angle. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. no. Mm -hmm. Are we good on that? Oh. All right. Oh, we, we still are missing a couple. What's the name of this bone right here? Occipital. Mm, close. Can't see the occipital from this view. Temporal. Temporal. And this is where the order would come in nicely. Because if we work, we skipped over a couple. We know this is frontal, okay? Then it goes parietal, and then you see this little bone that borders both the frontal and the parietal bone. This is actually another part of the sphenoid. Okay, the sphenoid is a very large bone that occupies a pretty big part of the skull. You can see a part of it inside the orbit, and you see another part of it right here. That's the lateral part. And if you look at your skull, you can, I mean, you can see that. That's pretty clear. See this little part? Right? There? That's the sphenoid. And then the sphenoid borders the temporal. Okay? Now let's use that same knowledge we just learned about, and we'll move over here. What's this ball? Maxilla. Maxilla. What is this ball? This ball. Temporal. Temporal. Perfect. This bone, we haven't named that one yet. Occipital. That's your occipital. What about this guy? Sphenoid. Sphenoid. That's that little part of the sphenoid. Okay. What about this little guy right here on top of the nose? Nasal. Nasal. That's maxilla. Pretty obvious there. He stretches up. Mm -hmm. What about this little guy beside the maxilla? Good. And then next to him, ethmoid. And that's all you can see from that view. That lateral view, you can't see the sphenoid. Uh -huh. um, he's, too, he's too deep in that in that skull. But yeah, mandible's down there. I held off. That's right, it's the mandible. Because we're going to need to learn the parts of a couple of bones, especially for the other parts of the body. But the mandible is one of those bones that we need to learn the parts for. Okay? And this is about the level of detail that I'll, I'll expect for you guys to know. Um, so the parts of bones, we'll do in a different color. We will do it in, how about, I left all my good markers in other class. Um, oh, we can do it in a light blue. Light blue will work. Yeah, that'll work. <coughs> Question? Yeah. Yes. What is this right here? This is your um, sphenoid. 
right? So that's what you're feeling right there. Isn't that, isn't it's, that a temple? Yeah, it's temple, right? It's your temple. It's but you're really it's feeling... It's different than the temple. Right, yeah, yeah. Temple is just like a common name for that part of your, your head, right? It's just a, you know. But what you're feeling is you can kind of feel the edge of your orbit. That's your zygomatic <laughs> arch. You know, that's what you're feeling right there. See, that's the zygomatic as it comes up. I mean, you can kind of see it, right? That's your zygomatic bones extend up. And it's just posterior to that is the soft tissue of your temple, which ultimately deep to that is your sphenoid. But there's a lot of muscle and, you know, and all that thing. Okay. This part of the mandible is called the body. This part right here is like the arm that extends down. It's called the ramus. See this little part right here that articulates with the skull? That's called the condylar process. So the condylar process is right here. Uh. <coughs> See that little point right there? It serves as the attachment site for muscles. That's your coronary process. That little dip between the two, mandibular notch. We've got two holes, foramina, that serve as passageways for blood vessels and nerves. We got one from this view, about right there. From this view, you got one right here, and one like right over there. These guys, they're in the mental region, mental foramen. <coughs> or mental foramen. But I point to one, so it'll be singular. Okay. I'm, I'm not gonna ask any more. Foramen, like up here? Yes, that's right. So we can talk about the foramen here. So you've got one, you've got a foramen. Oh, that's so tricky. You got one right here, one right here, one right here, one right here. This one right up here, he's actually super short. It's a hole, but he's not that long. All he does is he just bypasses the corner of your orbit. He just stretches from here, da, 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 and just skips that cord. <laughs> that provides the nerves, we'll learn about this in AMP2, these nerves that allow us to feel and control our face muscles, they'll come out from our orbit and they'll skip that corner because if they went around that corner, think about how easy it would be for them to get damaged every time. Ow. You like, uh, you know, poke your, yourself or something. But the name of these guys, this is the supra orbital foramen. Supra above orbital to orbit foramen. It's a hole. So the foramen just means hole. So this is the supra orbital foramen. And that's the F is just an abbreviation for that. If that's the supra orbital, what do you think he's called? And for orbital. Orbital foramen. Infra, below, orbital, the orbit, foramen. Let's talk about these guys. See how you have a circular hole that's more medial, more towards the nose than the other two? That guy is your optic canal. That's where your optic nerve passes through also the ophthalmic artery. You don't need to know that for the test, just, like, just know it's the optic canal, right? We'll learn about what goes through in A and B too. So that's the optic canal, it's a little hole, it's more medial. All right, 
See these other two holes? They look like slits. So the name of a slit-like hole is called a fissure. A fissure is the name of a slit-like hole. You've got one that's above, and you've got one that's below. This is the superior orbital fissure. Superior, it's above. Orbital, it's in the orbit. Fissure, okay? It's a slit-like hole that's on the top of the orbit. So superior orbital fissure, F-I-S-S. You are a What do you think this guy's name is? Inferior orbital fissure. Okay. Where the where the large flat bones come together, they form a joint that's called a suture. It's an immovable joint. We need to know the names of the sutures. Okay. Um, they're actually not that bad. You got a suture right here that forms the division between the frontal and the parietal. It looks like a crown going over the forehead. That's called the coronal suture. Remember the coronal uh, the section that comes in like that? This is the coronal suture. S, I'm just going to S is the abbreviation for suture. The suture is produced by the union of the temporal bone and the parietal bone. Squamous suture. The suture that is made by the uh, union of the occipital bone with the two parietal bones. So, that's like not sticking together. See the occipital bone right here? Occipital, two parietal. So, it's this suture right here. It looks like a little triangle. Lambwood suture. Two parietal bones come together and they form a suture that goes right on top of the head, right here. I can't really draw it, but I'll point, kind of like semi point to it. That's called the sagittal suture. Sagittal, sagittal section. That's not as pretty easy. So this is, I'll draw it right here. This is the sagittal suture. Oh, a couple more things. See this hole right here? That hole? What, what is that? Where's that? Why do we have a hole in our skull? Here, canal. Okay. The name of that hole is called the external acoustic meatus. A meatus is just a name for a tunnel-like hole. External, it's on the outside. Acoustic, that's where sound goes in. A tunnel-like hole on the outside of the skull where sound goes in. <coughs> so. External acoustic meatus. Where is that again? It is in the skull. It's going to be like the big hole right there. Right there, wherever the ear goes in, it's your ear now. Right there. You see that bump? It's right. Behind the external acoustic meatus, this little bump right here, it's called the mastoid foramen. No, no, mastoid process. If you have a nice model, you'll notice that you have this little pointy thing right beside the mastoid process. That's your styloid process. It's just an attachment site for muscles of our tongue and throat. And that and that's all I've never pointed to from this from those views. Right? I mean it seems like a lot when you look at it like that, but we built it up slow. So a couple times, I mean, honestly, it's really not that bad. You just hit it a couple of times, 15, 20 minute sessions here and there. <laughs>